Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Deep Waters here on Pro Box TV, your boxing channel. I'm George DiMatellis, joined in studio by Paulie Malignaggi, and also joining us, we'll have Chris Algieri, George Jakovic, and Neo, I mean, Showtime, <laughs> Sean Porter, <laughs> joining us on Deep Waters. It is going to be another great conversation because we're going to talk about light heavyweights. And so I pose the question to start the show, is it better Biev or Bevel that is the number one, the best? light heavyweight on the planet george let's get it started here on deep waters yeah that that that's the perfect place to start um and uh chris and paulie i i'd like to start especially with you guys we did a sparring session a couple of weeks ago before archer had his fight with callum smith and you guys but the question was asked who wins a fight better be Ev or bivol and you guys both said uh bivol would win now hindsight is 2020 um, we're just talking about the ranking, not who's going to win. But, Chris, who's one and who's two at 175 right now? I think you have to put Better Beav at number one just because he's been busier. Um, uh, it's not, I'm still up in the air in terms of you know, who beats who if they actually fight, but that's not the question, like you said, George. But in terms of uh, who's number one at, at 175 right now, I, I got to go up with Archer Better Beav. Um, you know, if you look at, at his, his work in, in, in recent years, I mean, he wasn't super busy last year because of the jaw injury. But still, I mean, a, a, a good win over Anthony Yard, a, a dominant, a very dominant win over over Callum Smith, um, who's been looking good at light heavyweight. It's 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 hard not to go against him. You know, Bivol, unfortunately, for for circumstances outside of his own control, hadn't fought for almost two years. He just came back with the uh, the um, Arthur fight. He looked good. Didn't look spectacular. Looked like he he normally looks. He controlled the pace. You know, scored a knockdown. Very very dominant. Um, but also we're not, we're not highly ranking Arthur at like, like the kind of guys that, that better be has been beating. So when you look at it like that, when you crunch the numbers for me, I, I got better be of sneaking, sneaking ahead of Arthur, uh, in, uh, in front of, excuse me, in front of Dimitri Bivol in the rankings right now. But when it comes down to when they fight, that's really what's going to matter. Oh well, yeah. That's a whole different thing. So Paulie, how about you? Who's one and two? I sometimes like to play the politics a little bit, George, as you've noticed, and I'll sometimes protest, but I'll sometimes give you a little bit of a of a nostalgia pick just so I can pull in the politics, right? Gee, you, you understand this, right? We, we know the game. I, I get it. All right, so well, thanks, it. George. I appreciate it. See, it's not, not everything I do is a protest. But I'm going to say... Now, that being said, I'm that, protesting. That, 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 <laughs> that being said, speaking of, speaking of that being said, champ, that being said, Dimitri Bivol has a win against the bestest, goodest, betterest fighter in the history of boxing. <laughs> this is the kind of fan base we have at times in those comment sections. And so oh, we man. have to we have to also I'm using those words to to show you the level of their intelligence as well. Because when you have oh, no. when you're a blowhard of this level, <laughs> oh, that's boy. your that's your intelligence level. So with a win like that, he has to be the top guy, right? He has to be. I mean, a win like that, he's beat the, the best guy in the history of, 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 of since the invention of boxing gloves. Bebo has a win and he dominated him. He has to be the best and guy. Paulie's talking about Canelo, if people don't know. And, and his fans. Um I mean, by, listen, logically, logically, oh, I right? thought you were talking about Lyndon Arthur. I'm, I was confused. No, there, no. So, <laughs> <laughs> logically, though, so by that logic, I mean, I, I think the entire fan base of trolls will get my back on this one, right? Because he, he beat pretty handily the best guy ever, the, the top guy ever, right? So, you think, so I, I, I think we have to go with Bebo from that point of view. Right, I mean that's what we should do, and 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 if they go head to head, I, I assume all of those people would pick Bivol to beat Better Bev, but of course, like the champ said, Chris Algieri, we won't know really until they fight head to head. In reality, because now we're gonna go back into reality. We were outside of reality first, and we're always back out of reality when we talk about things like that or bl any blowhard fan base of any of any kind. We we have to leave reality for a second. Let's step back into reality. Going back into reality, Better Bev has a bigger, stronger resume at light heavyweight, you know? Um, he just hasn't beaten the more popular fighters, or, you know, obviously in, in boxing today, with the exception of AJ, I don't know if anybody's popularity can come, can come near the stratosphere of Canelo's popularity. So I think the win over such a popular fighter by Bebel, um, it allows him to get this, uh, you know, be in this conversation. But I think from a logical perspective, Bebel is a very good fighter. But I think Better Bev is the guy who has to be ranked number one. And e this is even if you think Bebo wins the fight against Bitter Biev. Right now, the body right. of work at light heavyweight, I think, is, is, is uh, on the side of Bitter Biev. And I think for that reason, you have to make him number one and, and say Bebo number two. And a light heavyweight division, that's getting pretty interesting because you're also having 
talk about Benavides coming up to it and even Morel coming up to it. So it's uh, it, it's an interesting weight class. You know, you've still got. But guys. also, we're, we're, we are splitting hairs here. Yeah, we are. I like mean, our number one and number two are. It could be one A and one B. Yeah. You know? yeah. As as, as good as these guys could possibly th th be. This is one of those things where you can only hope the fight happens, so we can actually have an answer to the debate. You know, they, this is where you know boxing. The only way we can have an answer. Yeah. I mean, the this is the only way you have an answer in any sports. But unfortunately, boxing is a different kind of sport where, where where these where these things tend to not happen, right? Or a lot of times, more times than not, not happen. So, so I I I think I'm gonna go with better BF number one and um, B ball number two, despite the fact that I've given you the perspectives of various sides as uh, as uh, the beginning of my uh, speech uh, went into. But nonetheless, from a logical perspective, I'd say Bitter Biev is number one. And um, as far as a pick, I mean, I, I guess we'll get into that later. That's that's a lot more difficult than the, than the actual ranking. Well, you know what? I don't know if we'll even get into the picks now because the, fight, the fights, um, you know, it hasn't been set. But the good news is, the positive news is, before we go to Sean, that uh, Saudi Arabia wants to fight the fighters want the fight in Saudi Arabia. It seems like when they say they want something to happen in boxing, it happens. So mm -hmm. that's a good thing. That's a well, Saudi, that's some Saudi positive Arabia. Speech. Saudi Arabia needs to start looking at the 140 pound division if that's the case. You know what I mean? That is, the 140 pound division that's needs, a, and that's needs a, whole a lot of fights show. to happen. Yeah. Yes, they they might have to step in at some point. But Sean Porter, um, light heavyweights, one and two. Who who do you have? I mean, it's it's all been said. I'll be short and sweet. It's better be the more you know. Um, uh, consistent fighter in terms of activity in the last two to three plus years, even beyond that. Um, you know, he, he delivers what 20 and 0, 20 knockouts, 19 and 0, 19 knockouts, what is it? 20 and 0, 20 knockouts. 20. Yep, 20 yeah, I mean, you know, how you, you can't you can't defeat the numbers in this from this standpoint. You know, we just know who Arthur Better Beave is in the ring, we know who he's done it against. And you know, again, to Paulie's point, even though. Bevo uh, conquered Canelo Alvarez, you know, I, you, 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 that's one, one big name, you know, and, and through the course of virtually your entire career. So that's one is be better be two is be evolved for now. I didn't know. I didn't know whether Sean was going to make a pick here or if, whether he was going to ask me the, to, to choose between the blue pill or the red pill. <laughs> uh, uh, it's a it's a good look <laughs> and if you've seen the matrix you know what i'm talking about <laughs> it's a good look for sean so uh sean i i was watching your podcast the other day and you had antonio tarver on there a uh, former uh great light heavyweight champion on there and yeah. you asked the question i was hoping you would ask how would he do against archer so i thought we'd have a little fun and talk about better be because you know how boxing fans are are he just destroyed callum smith so to a lot of fans, he's the greatest thing since sliced bread, and he'll beat everyone in the world. But mm -hmm. let's have a little fun. Sean Porter, um, we'll start with Tarver because you did. Tarver, of course, said he would beat Better Beer because he had head movement. He doesn't get hit. But how do you guys see uh, Better Beer against Tarver? We're talking fantasy. We're talking subjective. But uh, Archer Better Beer against Antonio Tarver, Sean, how do you see that one going? You know, and especially with Tarver being just as big, just as strong, um, having more boxing ability, more defense, you know, being able to use his feet, the list goes on. I just think that when you when it when it comes to Arthur Better be, you, you know what you're getting. You're getting a a big snowplow coming right at you, and it's only a matter of time before the big punch lands and the fight's over against Tarver. You know, if that punch doesn't land, we we got to bet on on Tarver's left hand. That's that's more than likely gonna land multiple times, and if not, uh, and if not, stop. Uh, better be if it definitely stabilizes him. So, you know, I think that uh, in the fight between Arthur Better be and uh, and um, and Antonio Tarver, I I actually this is putting aside my bias. Uh, I I do think that uh, Antonio Tarver would 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 turn him, would spin him. The number one thing I would worry about as it pertains to to Antonio, I mean, nope, wouldn't even worry about that if he's you know a younger Antonio. I I got Antonio Tarver beating Arthur Better be. Chris. Yeah, th these are always tough because we always are looking at um, the guy who's current, the guy who's actually fighting. We're looking at him in this stage in, in time, right? Because right. we're not looking at his, we're not looking at his best. We're looking at it, at it, where he's at right now. We don't know if we've seen Arthur Better be his best. He might be getting better, which is wild because he's getting older. But um, but when you when you match him up in a fantasy situation and you look at something from the past, you're taking them at their best, right? So we're taking the best version of Antonio Tarver fighting mm -hmm. the current version of Archer Better BF, right? Mm -hmm. So when you look mm -hmm. at it like that, I'm going to agree with, with, with the champ, Sean Porter. I, I, I got Antonio Tarver. I think um, I think he's a bit of an underrated puncher. 
um, to some people. I think um, that left hand was 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 bad news, man. That thing was poison. And Petr Biev, you know, has shown some weakness. You know, when he has been touched by guys, got you know, dropped in the um, the Callum Johnson fight, and I think there was one other fight too where he got dropped. Um, and just uh, Antonio, Antonio, he was a, he was a tricky guy, man. He 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 was able to hide that left hand really well. Um, and a guy like like Better Biev, who can be hit with that, can get square at times. I, I think for the southpaw position, you know, Antonio has a good shot to land that that punch. But that being said, there was a lot of uh, less than stellar and somewhat listless performances from Antonio Tarver in his career, even close to his prime. Um, and when you got a guy who has con- as consistent as Better Biev is and has been, who uh, I I've never really seen him deterred from anything. Even the times when he was dropped, he got up to stop the guy almost immediately. He came right back and roared back. Um, so he's very, very focused. Doesn't seem to have that switch that turns on or off where it's like, eh, I don't know, I got to be careful. He just gets it done. And, you know, the switch is actually the opposite. He turns it on harder and steps up even more. So, yeah, I think I think I think the very best version of Antonio Tarver, I, I, I give it to him. But like I said, this is the better BF that we've seen so far and the guy we're talking about right now. Who knows? We go in there and better be a beats Bibble. I might change my mind. But as of yeah. right now, right here with a fantasy matchup, I got my man Tarver. Man, Paulie, I, I want to get your pick, but I can't wait to read the comments because on sparring session, one of the topics was better be up against Roy Jones in their prime. And both you guys pick Roy Jones. And man, some of those comments are like, you guys are crazy. I mean, these better be a fans also, are out strong. Well, no, I mean, listen, it's not about the better be of not being an excellent fighter. I, I think right. better be well, an excellent, excellent fighter. I just also, I also notice, and I've noticed this even um, with the career I, I was having with the past champions when they would come by, come around, and people just kind of forget the ex champions. And then you're the current champion, and people kind of give you more credit because you're, you're, you're more so uh, in the public eye. And, and, but then as, as you pass, pass along, people forget what, what you did too, and then they'll move mm-hmm. on to the next generation. So I, I, think it's, I think it's one of those situations where people either never saw Roy Jones fighting in his prime or don't know what it's like to you know, ha- watch the opening bell live over Roy Jones' fight and just know the dominance that you're about to see. And, um, and you know, or just it was so long ago that right now they're just caught up in the in, into the moment of Better Be. Better Be was excellent, man. I mean, I, he's, he, it's it's not a walk in the park for, for anybody. Even if, if Roy, I, I think, at times could make it look like a walk in the park in that kind of fight, Better Be if touches you once and, and you might not wake up for a week. You know what I mean? He's that kind of guy. So, and I've seen it. I worked the Campillo fight. I've worked. I've seen some of this, this guy. The, the way he hits, and then the expression on the people's faces, and even as as far as last week, what Callum Smith was saying about the way even the touches from Better Be were feeling. So I get where it's coming from. Um, this is an interesting one with Tarver as well. I tell you why, because I'm gonna set this one up a little bit more for everybody. Because uh, you know, in talking to Tarver and, and having to spend some time with Tarver when he was here at Pro Box, I got a real good sense of, of, of Antonio Tarver more so than I knew before, you know, and, and it's really a, a, an interesting uh, perspective here. But I think when you analyze something like this, having all the information is the best way possible. So Better Be was an excellent amateur, uh, did, uh, did very well in the amateurs, he even dropped Alexander Usyk, and, and, uh, even though he came up short in the decision in the amateurs. We know how strong he is and how good he is as a pro, but in the amateurs, he was also very good. I'm going to go into Antonio Tarver's amateur career, too. Antonio Tarver is one of the best amateurs the United States has ever produced. He won the Pan Am Games. He won the World Championships. He was the favorite going into the 1996 Olympics. He won a debatable decision. Everybody talks about the debatable decision Roy Jones got in 1988, which was obviously the, the, rob, the hallmark as far as the, this benchmark of what you would call a robbery. But Antonio Tarver probably deserves that decision against Vasily Girov in the 1996 semifinals. Tarver was the favorite to win the gold medal. He had come in as the defending, as the world defending world amateur champion as well as the uh, Pan Am champion. He's supposed to win the gold medal in 96 as well in the Olympics. As a matter of fact, Jirov's upset of, of Tarver, he wins a gold medal, and they make him the fighter of the tournament, the outstanding boxer of the tournament. That's how much of a surprise Jirov was in beating Tarver. So Tarver is an amateur. Uh, amateur versus amateur, I think I, I, I'm, I'm going to go with Tarver for sure in the mm-hmm. amateurs. You know, um, mm-hmm. In the pros, you have one little thing here that you got to keep in mind. The fights are longer. The fights are longer, and the destructiveness of, of Better Be plays a big factor here because now the fights are longer. You're not in and out in three rounds and where, where you can kind of dazzle a guy and make him respect your power just enough for him to calm down for enough rounds. So to be, you know, now in, in 12 rounds, we've seen the consistency of Better Be and, and Champ Chris, you mentioned a good point that Tarver wasn't always consistent as a pro. Some, some, some performances are listless. Some performances are very good. Uh, Better Be has always been consistent. So you're going to get the, the consistency of Better Be This is so That's why this is a harder fight to pick in the pros because the consistency of Better Be is eventually what drowns people and stops people, even when they're having early success. Like, for example, uh, 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 
Vazdik. Vazdik was doing uh, very well uh, against Berbio until he got stopped, right? So, so you got to keep this in mind. Can Tarver last that 12 rounds? Can Tarver not fade uh, uh, in the, uh, as, as the rounds go on? I'll tell you one thing. Tarver is very durable. He's never been stopped. Antonio Tarver's never been stopped. You look at his career, Antonio Tarver was never stopped. He's also really big. Yeah, really Really big. big. Never got stopped and tough as nails because I'll tell you, he broke his jaw in the Eric Harding fight and he said it was the most painful thing. It was the most painful thing he ever went through. He stayed in the fight and didn't get stopped. Um, But... He, did, he, what, he faded out, and he lost the decision in that fight as well. So you, Tarver doesn't get stopped, but he can fade if he's hurt enough, right? So, so I, you have to keep all of these scenarios in mind, and then you can make a pick, I think. I think I'm going to go with Antonio. I really think I'm going to go with Antonio. But it, it's, it's, it's not an easy one to pick. Uh, but, you got again, you got to keep all these things in mind. In the amateurs, I would pick Antonio. I would pick Antonio for sure in the amateurs. In the pros, it's not as easy to pick. I, I don't think Antonio's speaking out of, out of turn or out of pocket when he says he would beat better BF. I think it's, it's highly likely. I'd probably go 60-40, 55-45 in terms of uh, in favor of Antonio Tarver. Uh, I think he would, you know, know it's a dangerous enough fight to where it would uh, uh, he'd have to be at his best. As I'm talking here, I got blue balls because I wish I could actually see the fight now, but I'm never gonna be able to see the fight because I'm getting excited just talking about the breakdowns of it. But yeah, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna probably pick Tarver slightly in, in a fight where it wouldn't shock me if better be have also won, you know, in that kind of situation, you know, but Roy, well, Roy, the cop, people in the comments with Roy, Roy in his prime was, I mean, unbeatable. the closest thing to unbeatable. a comic book superhero you're going to find that I'm not, I'm, I, I, I kid you not. I mean, Floyd Mayweather had the perfect career, right? But in, a, in, in the prime of primes, there's a moment, there's a moment that where Roy Jones was just consistently like a Superman. I mean, they, they, he, they, yeah. he didn't get the nickname Superman for no reason. Exactly. Roy, Roy was scary good. Like, I, I don't mm-hmm. think people will ever understand in the moment because a lot of people start seeing Roy as he's older. I can remember my best friend telling me a story. Um, and again, I may be dragging along here, but I just want to give people perspective of this. But telling me a story. When he was younger, Sugar Ray Leonard was getting ready to fight Terry Norris. And his uncle was like, oh, Sugar Ray Leonard's fight. This is going to be unbelievable tonight, this and that. And he was pumping up Sugar Ray Leonard. And my, my, my best friend was like, I'm, I'm like seven years old. I don't really know Sugar Ray Leonard. I just heard of him. He goes, but he's fighting Terry Norris. And my, he goes, my uncle says, Sugar Ray Leonard's fighting tonight. And my friend goes, no, no, Terry Norris is fighting tonight. You know, because my, my friend knew who Terry <laughs> Norris was. He had no idea what Sugar Ray Leonard was at the time. And he said the first, that was the first sort of look he got of Sugar Ray Leonard. So it, it, it gave him a, a first impression that wasn't good. And I think people suffer from that with Roy Jones. Obviously, as he gets older, mm-hmm. he appreciates Ray Leonard now. But in the moment, I think the impression people have of Roy Jones because of his late career, and a lot of people just know him for his late career post Harvard, um, I think they have that, that judgment of him because they may not know the greatness that was there before. And I think as time goes by and you separate it, you got to still learn, just like with Ray Leonard. You, know, you don't judge Ray Leonard at the end of his career. You don't judge Ali at the end of his career. You judge him in the, when they were at their best. Man, Roy was... <sighs> the closest thing to Invincible you're going to find. But as far as Tarver yeah. and Bitter Beer, yeah, I'm going to I'm going to slightly hedge towards Tarver. Well, let's uh you know, you see the the graphic says compared to some of the greats of the past, um let's talk about one of the greatest light heavyweights of all time, Michael Spinks, a guy who I grew up watching fight all the time. He was unbeaten as a light heavyweight, had the Spinks jinx. Uh Chris, mm-hmm. this is a, a an intriguing matchup. Michael Spinks against Arthur Beterbiev. That's a that's a, a very intriguing fight. I got Better Beer. I think Ooh. I think because the Sphinx was able to the 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 persona of Mike was able to break Sphinx, and the persona of Better Beev is becoming that of a monster, and it, it, it's it's starting to precede him before he even gets into the ring. So I I think if you have that in you that you can be affected mentally by by someone being intimidating, Better Beev's a monster, man. Well, so. to be fair though, I mean Sphinx was no heavyweight. Uh, he he was heavyweight champion at one, but I mean Michael um, at once. But at one seventy five, you think Archer would have that kind of effect an effect on him? I think he punches like a heavyweight, and I think that um, it, and if, that's the thing. If you're not worried about Better BF, you're gonna have to deal with his power, and he's got that heavyweight power. And and if you are, how are you gonna fight? How are you gonna keep keep him off you? Because at this stage, like he's just not letting you let letting anybody breathe, and he's all over them. Um, and I think size wise, you know, like uh, another reason I gave to, I've, I gave it to Tarvis is, is the height, six foot mm-hmm. two, long southpaw, difficult guy to track down, even when you're putting a ton of pressure. Michael on him. Spinks was six foot two. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but mm-hmm. he he's not a southpaw, and he's not. I don't know. He did, he did he doesn't strike me as as even even Tarver fought a heavyweight. He fought 
like he was looked like a, a real heavyweight. He was he looked like a he looked a bigger Jam, heavyweight than Michael Slingshirt was. Jam, tag me in, Jam. Tag me in. Tag me in. Tag, tag me in. Tag me in. Okay, tag me. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take a t tag in from the champ. Here's what I'm doing. Bitter, uh, bitter BFB Spinks because Spinks relied a lot on punching power, but also awkwardness. His awkwardness would throw off your own your own style, and his awkwardness would throw off your own style. And then of course he would be able to land some weird shots, some strong shots. He was a good puncher at light heavyweight. But when you're technically and fundamentally sound and mentally strong as better BF, awkwardness doesn't bother you. You know what I mean? That, there are some guys where awkwardness will not bother them. They're just going to go in, and they're going to smash you. Bitter, Spinks' awkwardness, which was a, a big factor in making him effective, awkwardness plus punching power makes guys awkward. You think, think Prince Hanassim Ahmed, think Junior Witter. They break a lot of rules, but they get away with it because of punching power. I think Spinks also broke a lot of rules because of the uh, punching power he was afforded, at, especially at light heavyweight. But there are certain people, very rarely, but there are certain people it doesn't matter. You don't break their, their, their technical style, regardless of your, of your awkwardness. Uh, it, it doesn't frustrate them. They, they, they go about it their way. And Bitter Beef is exactly one of those people. The awkwardness is not going to throw off Bitter Beef. He's going to keep cutting the ring off. He's going to keep going to Spinks, and I think he's going to hurt him. Sean, thoughts on that? Better Beef and Spinks. Uh, let me say, I, I had a story I wanted to share real quick about Better Beef. Um, spent some time with John Scully. Scully is in uh, in Better Beef's uh, camp. Mm -hmm. And uh, this was a few years ago. Scully told me that they brought in someone to spar with Better Beef. The guy goes about two or three rounds. And then he, he goes back to the corner and tells Scully to take his head, his head gear off. Scully looks at him and says, we're not, we're not done. We, you know, we got a couple more, champ. What are you talking about? The guy looks at Scully and says, take my headgear off, take my gloves off. This isn't normal. Nobody should be able to punch that hard. Mm -hmm. I, have, I, I, have to be, I have to be concerned for my health. I can't take these kind of punches. Take my headgear off. I'm done. This is someone who's brought in to spar, is paid to spar and get this guy ready for other guys to fight with 10-ounce gloves on. And this guy... And this guy is telling them that this that better beef is punching too hard. I'm I'm concerned for my health. I can't do this anymore. You know. Yeah, with that being it. said, that's and and to and to uh, and to Paulie's point, when you're so focused on your mission and you're so orthodox and 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 fundamentally sound, there's some guys that just won't throw anything off, and it's only a matter of time before that Mack truck gets you. And I think that that's what what would happen with uh, someone like um. Michael Spinks, who uh, again was big for the for the weight class, could punch hard, but br broke a lot of rules. When you break a lot of rules against somebody like Better Be, you 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 get got, you know. And I, I also was looking at Michael's speed and his footwork as well, and I, I just don't think it's enough. Mm, well, this could be a much longer show, but we're out of time. There's so many more names: Andre Ward and Bob Foster, and on on. We're gonna have to do another show on this. But George, I like the Sergey uh, Kovalev matchup. That, that, and Sergey, that was, and I had him on the list a, too. That's a Kovalev. fun fight. And I, that's a so fun fight. I, I think we'll do another show on this. But look, this, George, this is a positive thing. Hopefully, these two guys, Better Be and Bivol, are going to fight. And once they announce the fight, we're going to have some fun breaking it down. Absolutely, on Big Fight Preview that you can see here on Pro Box TV. Paulie, Chris, George, and Sean, thank you very much for joining us and dropping knowledge as usual here on Deep Waters. Don't forget to download the app and like and subscribe where apps are available. Well, the apps part where apps are available. And also, shout out to our official betting sponsor of ProBox TV, sportsbetting.ag. Thank you very much for watching this presentation of Deep Waters here on ProBox TV, your boxing channel.